Why should you prepare for SHTF? Well, the hard truth is, if everyone around you in the world is preparing for something in some form or fashion, you should too. Not that you're ever going to need your preps, but you have to be cognitive of the fact that maybe one day you will. And here's why. There could be an economic collapse. This could happen globally where everything breaks down or privately in your own personal life. You could have some sort of financial problem that forces you to live on a budget or within your store. And natural disasters, if we've learned anything over the past few years from the Hurricane Trina disasters, Tornado Alley disasters, and the multitude of floods, hurricanes, landslides, tornadoes, forest fires, and even Japan, it's to be prepared in some form because the magnitude of things that could possibly plague us is endless. We could even have resource shortages. And if it's not in the stores during hard times, you're just going to have to live without it, period. There's not going to be any rushing out to buy this or buy that. If you didn't get it beforehand, you won't be able to get it because the shelves will be empty. Terrorism is a big thing now, and we should all be looking over our shoulders at the person next to us in line, sitting beside us or behind us on a bus, train, or plane. We should even take a closer look at the person pushing a buggy in the grocery stores, because hate is real. And as long as we live, evil is going to exist, and those persons looking to control the masses by any means necessary. Inflation is also a big thing. Buying now prevents you from spending unnecessary money later on. Can you guys imagine spending $25, $30 for a loaf of bread, $100 for a bag of rice, or maybe even $20 for a jar of peanut butter or jam? It could happen. And how about martial law? Governments are not known for taking care of their citizens, and they enact martial law to control us. So being prepared for this is another story altogether. All I can say is, put a few things in a berry cachet, just in case. Because martial law, though hard to believe, it has happened right here on U.S. soil. Check out the videos and documents on martial law during Hurricane Katrina. You're going to be surprised. Also, rioting and looting. If you don't have guns and ammo in your home right now, I bet the person trying to break into your house will. So now I've just given you some vague scenarios of what could possibly happen and what could possibly cause us to have to live in a crap hit the fan scenario. And hindsight is always 2020 when it's too late or when the crap has already hit the fan. Preparing beforehand only ensures that you're able to survive or exist out of harm's way for longer periods of time. Now it won't make you immune to or not vulnerable to the problems that arise from these situations, but it does give you wiggle room to react. So after you analyze you and your family's needs and you get a better understanding of your surroundings, the question should be, where should you begin? Good question. My answer to that is, just start somewhere. But a good rule of thumb is first prepare your food and water um, storage. Go out and buy inexpensive foods which last up to three to five years. This includes both perishable and non-perishable items. So let me explain the three levels of food storage. Level one is perishable items. These are things like your bread, fruits, and your vegetables. They last anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks. Level two is your mid-level storage. This is your canned goods, your water. These things last up to five years or longer. This is where we live on a daily basis. If you look at any of your best buy dates on your food products, you'll notice that they are probably good for up to three to five years on your canned good items. Now, level three is the most important food storage level of all. It's your long-term food storage, which includes dehydrated and freeze-dried foods. These foods are packaged to last up to 25 or 30 years. Now, see, this is what you should do. If you buy a little bit here and there, in no time, your food storage is probably going to be about six to eight months, which is sufficient for any disaster and not too much of a financial burden for you. And water is pretty easy. Check out my uh, my pur uh, purification videos, and a few of the people on YouTube have water catchment systems that are awesome. Check those out to get a better understanding of water. Now, the methods for purifying and catching water is endless, but water sources, finding clean water sources, not so much. So that's why it is a necessity to store water also. It's also feasible to think that at the very least one gallon per day per person for drinking and bathing. 
Once again, one gallon per day per person for drinking and bathing. Over in Haiti, when I'm doing mission work, we get two cups of uh, rainwater that's been purified to bathe and two cups to rinse. And that is honestly doable. So it is possible to live on one gallon per day if you're not overexerting yourself. Guys, understand this. If our system breaks down on any level at any time, it will affect our commerce. And this could possibly cause import and export to no longer exist. It would halt altogether. So what would you do? Where would you get your family's basic needs from? You know where? From the preparations that you've already made, you would get it from your stockpile. Now the next prep is first aid and medical supplies. This area of preps is important because accidents and illnesses happen and having extra wound supplies and, and medicines on hand is just logical. You can start out by getting some of these things at the dollar stores because it's inexpensive and Walmart even has an 88 cent bin where you can pick up creams, ointments and, and cheap medicines that you can throw into that, uh, that medical supply kit. And then you can move up from there. Now, what you want to do is you want to put these supplies in a waterproof container and only touch the contents with sterile gloves on. Make sure you also have a suture kit in that first aid kit as well. You should also plan on having alternative backup energy. If the lights go out indefinitely, you're going to need a way to heat and cool your home. And you'll also need lighting to get things done. So a small generator, extra gas, battery operated fans, propane or kerosene heaters, low wattage lights, and extra batteries are a must. Also, it won't hurt to have a few solar panels with deep cycle marine batteries on hand just in case your, your gas runs out. I'm, I'm going to share something with you guys. This is how you're going to do it. You're going to put a few dollars away here and there, and you're going to sacrifice dining out, or maybe that weekly movie, or the pair of shoes that you saw in, in, in a store this week. This preparing thing is doable, and it doesn't have to be hard. It may take you a year or two to get to where you want to be, but patience is a virtue. Now, security. Security is, a, is another story. I know guns, ammo, storage is all so expensive. I get it. And you have no clue where to start. A good choice here is security for your home first. Home security first, then personal security. Because the truth is, not many of us has met with an armed carjacker or a purse snatcher. So secure your home first, then spend the extra money securing you. A good home defense gun is a 12 gauge pump shotgun. It has that universal sound. Let me see if I can do it for you guys. Watch out burglars, watch out robbers, watch out anyone trying to steal your preps. Then you have the 9mm firearm, which is definitely a sufficient enough round for personal and home defense. Also a 22 caliber gun for hunting small game if it came down to that. And finally, battle and hunting rifles, which could consist of either AR-15s, AK-47s, 308s, 30-06s, or whatever fits your needs best. Finally, for the fun stuff. Bug out bags, go bags, good bags, which are also called get out of dodge bags. This is done for you um, and you do this when you have to leave your home in a hurry. They have all of your basic needs and, 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 and all of your basic supplies in them so that you, if you have to leave your home in a mad rush, you can just grab that up and go. So on to should you bug out or stay and fight and secure your home. The only way I can answer this is, it depends on the threat. Only you can decide, and only in that moment, whether or not staying or leaving is in your family's best interest. But knowing where you will go if you must leave is essential. Nothing hurts a family more, and nothing hurts their ability to survive and thrive more than no plan. So have a bug out location thought out ahead of time, have a plan B if roads are impassable, and then have a plan C if you have to change quickly from one plan to the other. Also know where there's a wooded area at in, within a 20 mile radius of your home. Make sure that near that wooded area or within that wooded area there's a water source and good hunting. Because even though it is unpleasant and unthinkable that you may have to camp out, the truth is, anything could happen. Which leads me to preparing a car everyday carry or a camping bin. Both of these preps give you life-saving security if you are fleeing your home. 
Camping gear includes tents, tarps, sleeping bags, cooking items, food and water for 72 hours or longer, fire starting kits, knives, hatchets, GPS um, units, extra batteries, flashlights, etc., etc. It is key and paramount to make sure that you, you your pack that you're going to be carrying is no more than about one third your body weight or your ability to hike with it. For me, about 30 pounds, give or take one or two pounds, is good enough because even though one third of my body weight is 54 pounds, that is just not doable for me, especially during some kind of crap hit the fan, hectic situation. It's just too heavy. So 30 pounds is honestly just about right and that might be too heavy. Okay, so now that I've given you the basics and you know what you should prep and why you should prep, go out, get started, and good luck.